If you don't outscore opponents by 464 points without having a really deep football team, who are some of the unsung heroes on this team? You know, I think I, I have to start by saying, uh, you know, Pete Boyer. I think Pete, uh, his, his statistically being a, full, being a fullback and a lead blocker, uh, arms out of the eye or in the power eye, uh, you don't get a whole lot of stats. Uh, but I can tell you that every single coach from around the league uh, thought he was a huge, huge piece. Um, you know, guys like um, Cody Lovensoller, first-year football player uh, and starter, um, uh, played tremendously. And Dustin Raymond was an all-first-team all-conference selection. Um, that was that was the other guard uh, that allowed us to run traps and, and counters so well in in the interior. Uh, Craig Chambers, our center, uh, was was definitely um, an unsung hero, be, being in the middle of our offensive line. You don't tend to get too much of the limelight, uh, but he definitely grew an incredible amount being a first year varsity starter. Um, you know, guys like Alex Sador, uh, that had a tremendous season on the left side of our line. Um, Colby Kendall and, and um, Wes Stinson uh, from the defensive side both had uh, tremendously, tremendously solid years. Um, you know, and then obviously Corey Bjornsson. Um, you know, statistically had a great season defensively, uh, and one was and was definitely one of the most physically imposing uh, kids on the field at any given time. You know, and I think um, you know guys like Caleb Richard, who kicked 61 of 64 extra successfully, extra points, uh, one of two field goals. Um, you know, that was just a, a testament to his um, to his effort and commitment to to improve as a as a kicker. Um, Caleb Smith made personal sacrifices and always put the team ahead of his own his own self and I'll be forever grateful for that and uh, just a constant team player and um, you know we had a we had a number of those contributions this year. I grew up actually with Josh Withy on uh, North Street right here in town. Um, he was a year behind me in school, but, uh, but growing up on the same street, and of course his father being the head coach at the time, um, I, was, I was involved almost, almost on a daily basis um, with, with the program from a very young age, um, and just you know, continued to uh, stay around it, admired them, admired the team. Um, the 96 state championship team was uh, yeah, I can vividly remember a lot of the, a lot of the things that happened in, during that season, and then the following year when they lost in the state championship game, um, and then from there, um, you know, just continued following it uh, through the years of Brian Bellamare until I got into school, um, and uh, you know, it, playing at Foxcroft Academy was uh, it was you know more than I ever thought it would be, <laughs> and. Uh, Never did I think when I graduated that I was ever going to be come back as the head football coach, but uh, it's it's definitely been a honor and a blessing. The FA football program means a lot to everyone on the team and myself included. For the past four years, that's pretty much all I've been doing, even during the regular season and during the off season, just working really hard and putting in a lot of time to try and not only do better as a player myself, but try and make the team also a little bit better. It really means a lot, not just to the team, but the community too. Um, you know, my history with the FA football program is, uh, is a little lengthy. Um, I've been a three-year starter, and uh, you know, starting out, we had a pretty rough um, you know, season after we graduated so many players from the 2009 Eastern Maine Championship team. But, um, you know, a lot of us were young. A lot of, we had a lot of sophomores on the team, and uh, you know, we just worked hard, and it all brought us up to the point of this year. And um, I mean, last year we all learned so much more experience, and then this year just uh, all that experience took over. Growing up as a kid, you know, everybody's out at Oaks Field for the home games, watching the games. Um, it's just kind of the the society and our community kind of grooms you uh, to become uh, football in the football kind of state of mind at FA, and uh, we know it means a lot to the community.
I started playing football my sophomore year and uh, didn't I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't know what to expect. But I'm very fortunate and uh, blessed to have been part of this program. And coming into this season, uh, we had a lot of returning starters and a lot of seniors. And we, had, we knew coming in, we had great leadership. Uh, coming into this year, um, I had high expectations. Um, I knew that we were senior heavy. Uh, I knew that we had a lot of returning all-conference uh, members of last year's LTC team uh, and, a, and a number of uh, first teamers. During training camp this summer, could you sense that there was something different about the team this year? Yeah, the team was a lot more of a family than anything. The past few years, we've, all, we've had some teams that have been successful in some ways, but this team has really been more together and just always wanting to keep on going and keep on pushing and giving their best for everything even when Pete was pretending to be a pony during down back downs, but we all had a lot of fun together and knew that it was gonna be a great season that we had. You know, we gotta go back all the way to the beginning of June, almost, uh, almost, you know, when baseball ended, because baseball went so late into the state championship. Um, in June, we, we started a seven on seven league. We, we entered that league in Hamden. Uh, so a lot of our skill guys are our wide receivers, um, our running backs, our quarterback, um, got to play seven on seven in Hamden. Um, got to play nine games down there this summer against some of the better competition in, in Eastern Maine, uh, regardless of class. We played Bangor, we played Hamden, uh, Belfast, um, as well as you know Orono and, and John Baptist in, in those leagues that are in our, in our league. Um, you know, and I think that's where it started. Um, I think that our um, camaraderie and our, our teamwork started there, and they were very focused all summer on playing well. Um, and their time, that's, when they, that's when their timing uh, started, and that just carried over into uh, double sessions. Um, you know, and the energy level was high uh, all, you know, all, every single session. There was great effort and great energy. Um, and then our two exhibition games, the Waterville game, we played them square and Waterville ended up playing um, in the Class B uh, Eastern Maine Final. Uh, so uh, that, that was great for us to play them square. Um, and then the uh, scrimmage against uh, Matt and Cook, um, we, we fired on all cylinders right out of the gate and, and played a very good football game that day. So preseason was fantastic for us. We were able to stay healthy, uh, energy level was high, and, and all the seniors kept everybody on the same page. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. Now, time for me is nothing because I'm counting no A's. No, In the season opener, your first team defense held Ellsworth to negative 20 yards from scrimmage before giving way to the second unit in the third quarter. How much did this opening effort do for the unit's confidence? Well, you know, we knew, we knew Ellsworth was a, was a new team, and, uh, you know, we didn't know exactly what we were going to be seeing, but, um, I mean, it was basically over after the first quarter, and I mean, we just had a, it was a really good, you know, first game for us. In week one against Ellsworth, you put up 71 points without a single player tallying more than 78 yards from scrimmage. What did this opening win tell you about your football team? You know, I think it told us right then and there that we were going to be pretty balanced, that we were not going to have to rely on any one individual to uh, carry the load. Um, and that we could have, we could score points on a, a number of different ways, um, including special teams. So um, it, I think it just was an early indicator of our, our team balance. Against Dexter, Hunter Law connected with Ryan Rebar for two touchdowns. Nine different players combined to rush for 288 yards, and your defense pitched a shutout and held the Tigers to 37 yards from scrimmage on their home field. Was this the game where you started to understand just how good your team could be? Yeah, I think, um, especially from a defensive standpoint, you know, Dexter <clears throat> had beaten Herman the week before in week one and moved the ball uh, pretty well uh, the majority of that game, and they had a good power running game and a, and a big line up front. Um, and the fact that they were only able to manage 37 yards of offense um, was not just a statement, um, but a, a dominating performance uh, for our defense. And 
you know, it, it left our offense with, with so little of a field uh, to score that, you know, the 55 points, um, you know, j came as a result of, the, of, of that defensive effort. So I think we realized right then and there how good we were going to be as a defensive team. That game just really showed that our defense was surpassing the expectations that we had coming into this year. I got to be unstoppable. I got to be unstoppable. Ryan Rebar was up to his old tricks in the blowout win over MCI in week three. Do you think Coach Bertram will be happy to see him graduate this spring? <laughs> yeah, I think he'll be very pleased. I don't, I don't know if he'll be the only one that'll be, that's thrilled to see Ryan go. Uh, we are all saddened. Um, but that's how it goes, and uh, um, you know the two games that he had against MCI over the last couple of years are kind of uh, head scratchers. I believe he had seven interceptions, uh, maybe five touchdowns against them in, in two in two games, in, and in this this one this fall he only played in about half of the game. Uh, I, did, I don't even know if he played uh, many snaps in the third quarter. Um, he, he scored in a variety of different ways <laughs> against them, and um, he was up to his old tricks. He scored on a punt return, he caught, he re caught a touchdown pass, returned an interception for a touchdown. Uh, so it was just one of those, one of those games where he was going to get them. After three blowout wins to start the season, what were the team's expectations heading into a road matchup with undefeated Stearns in week four? We knew this was going to be our first big test, especially playing away. But we were definitely up for the challenge, and we had a great week of preparation for that game. And, um, yeah, it was just a great week. You didn't need to use Donnie Boyer out of the backfield very much in the first three games, but you called his number 20 times against undefeated Stearns in week four, and the result was a 144-yard, four-touchdown effort. How important was it to get him on track as you headed into the meat of your schedule? You know, I think it was important for him to get on get on that track, um, going in, like you said, to the meat of our schedule. And uh, that performance was not just a great one for him, but it was a it was a really nice one for our offensive line, uh, really controlling the line of scrimmage and allowing him to to break way on a, on a number of runs uh, of more than ten yards. So, um, like I said, that was a, that was a big one for him to get on the right track. Cause all I ever have Redemption songs You were undefeated when you headed to, uh, headed to Orono in week five last year, but the Red Riots routed you guys and your team never seemed to fully recover from that loss. You were again both 4-0 heading into a huge homecoming matchup in week five this year. What did you say to the team as you prepared them for this game? You know, I, there wasn't a whole lot for me to say. They were they were carrying the the pain, the emotion, um, and all all of the baggage that came with it from last year's defeat um, with them. And uh, you know, I just told, the the biggest thing I told them was just give more effort than they give. And uh, on that night, that's really when I we started to understand that we had a special group because uh, we didn't just beat them. We dominated them, and they were undefeated. They were scoring a bunch of points through the first four weeks. Um, so it really was, it, it had the build up of being the, the matchup of the season, of the regular season. And the fact that we dominated it the way that we did um, was um, just, a, 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 just a true testament to the, the effort that the kids put forth. And they prepared uh, unbelievably hard, and, and they were very focused for that, for that game, and uh, it showed on the scoreboard. How much did the huge win over Orono mean to this team, especially in light of the loss that they handed you guys last year? Um, last year, uh, we were we had a pretty good start to the season, and we went into the Orono game, and they just handled us every play. They, it wasn't even close. They destroyed us, and uh, it was kind of like embarrassing for us to have that loss, and <clears throat> we were just looking for a way to uh, kind of get revenge on them and also still have success in our season so um, we were all especially ready for that game because we knew that they were coming in as uh, one of the top teams this year so it meant a lot to us to really work hard that week especially and come into the game and just give everything we had.
Would you say that up until that point, that was the most satisfying win of your career as a coach? Uh, yeah, I believe it's got to be up there. Um, it, it's definitely got to be up there. Can I get an encore? Do you want more? Cook your roll with the Brooklyn boys. So for one last time, I need y'all to roll. So you followed up that great performance against Orno with another masterpiece of John Babst. What does it say about your team that you were able to beat the undefeated Crusaders 40 to nothing despite completing just one pass for zero yards? Mm, yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think it just speaks to our offensive line. You know, it was a wet, it was a wet night. Uh, we kept the ball on the ground, um, and those guys up front uh, really did a nice job wearing down John Vaps, especially later in the game, uh, you know, into the third and into the fourth quarter. Um, you know, our ground attack was really, uh, really, really punishing at times in that game, later in the game, and, you know, defensively we were all over the field again. Um, Louis was tremendous in that game. Corey was great in, in that game, as a number of others. And, um, you know, I think it just it spoke to our defensive effort again and it spoke to our ability to run the ball with power. You followed up the huge win over Orono with an equally impressive performance at John Babst, forcing seven turnovers and notching your fifth straight shutout win. Talk about the team's defensive performance in this game. Well, um, you know, the first half of the game, we were, uh, it, was, it was pretty close. I mean, it was only 7-0 at halftime, but um, it, was a, it was definitely a defensive battle on both, for, uh, for both teams. And, um, Starting out in that second half, you know, our conditioning just took over, um, and we came out and we punished them, and uh, the defense really stepped it up in that second half, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, we definitely took over. After so many big wins in a row, do you think your team was overconfident heading into Week 7's matchup with Bucksport? And did this loss end up being a blessing in disguise? Um, I don't believe we were overconfident going into that game uh, because we, we, uh, the kids had the same focus and the same uh, intensity in practice that, that they had the previous six weeks of the year. Um, you know, I think I, I need to shoulder a lot of the blame of that. I didn't have our kids as prepared as um, Coach Sankey did. And, um, you know, uh, it was just one of those games that speaks to anything can happen on any given night in the game of football and in the game of comp any, in any c competition you can you can be beaten on any night and you know just Bucksport um, took advantage of uh, some miscues that we had and uh, took advantage of those opportunities and, and made it made us pay um, but it was absolutely 100 percent a blessing in disguise in disguise um, you know, having those kids, having our kids um, feel that pain of defeat, um, looking at that scoreboard that night, forcing them to look up there at that scoreboard, 13 to zero, um, and really understand and and to take it to, to another level uh, that that wasn't going to happen again. I think that was the that was the um, that was the moment that they, I think they needed to have in order to win a state championship. I think that was a really good learning experience for us as a team. I know coming off of that field, no one was happy with it, and no one wanted to ever end our season together like that. That was a real tough thing, and it made us learn that we weren't invincible, but we were still a great team that had more things that we needed to work on in order to get to that state championship that we were going to get to. Well, I'm In the regular season finale against Matt and Cook, you guys ran for 242 yards, threw for 168, and completely shut their offense down for three quarters before giving way to the second unit. How important was it to come up with a solid team effort on the heels of the loss to Bucksport the week before? Getting that win after Bucksport uh, was crucial, um, and especially not just that, but heading into the playoffs, we knew we had to have a good game and uh, carry the momentum and into the playoffs. You know, quite honestly, that the bounce back game against Matanakuk after the Bucksport loss was a huge moment for us. Um, not, you know, just the way that we played and the way we executed um, and fired on all cylinders in that game 
uh, was a true testament to the way that we prepared that week following the loss. Hunter Law connected with five different receivers on his way to posting a perfect quarterback rating against Mattanoff Cook Academy in a nice bounce back win to close the regular season. Talk a little bit about Hunter's development as a first year starter at quarterback. Um, you know, we knew what we had with him uh, from an athletic standpoint. We knew that he was going to be very good on his feet. We knew that he was going to be able to uh, make throws downfield. Uh, he had a, a strong enough arm. Um, you know, but his development really started to show up at that point in time of the season, uh, you know, in, in, in the last game of the regular season and then heading into the playoffs, he really turned into a great decision-making quarterback. Um, you know, we, we started to put him in spots where, where he had multiple levels of receivers to go to um, on either side of the field. Um, so that allowed him to go through his progressions a little bit easier. Um, and I think it just, it, it just came to him. Um, he just always worked hard at, at, at what he did. And um, that, that game was just a, a very good indication of things to come, of things to follow. And, um, you know, he just always wanted to improve this year. And, uh, and that game was, was certainly uh, one, of the, one of those games. Hello, friend. You drew Matt and Aukuk for round one of the playoffs. Was it strange playing the same team two weeks in a row and three times in one year? Yeah, it was a little bit. It was a little bit strange because, uh, especially since it hadn't been a very close game either at times. But uh, coaches just kept reminding us that we had to be mentally tough and uh, just keep taking it week by week and not overlook anybody. So um, we did our best just to stay on track and practice and do the things that we've we done all year. So um, we just really tried to prepare for that playoff game like we would for any playoff game. You guys forced six turnovers and moved the ball well in the playoff opener against Matt and Aukuk, but it seemed like it was your special team's play that did the most damage. Talk about how effective your special team units were week in and week out this season. Yeah, um, our kickoff team was busy this year. There's, there's no question about it. We scored a lot of points and um, you know, you, you, you would think that over the course of the year, uh, the, um, the number of kickoff return opportunities our opponents had that they would break one and, uh, for a score, and, and that never happened. Uh, we, had a, we had a couple of, of longer ones, but that's going to happen. Uh, but the number of times we pinned a team inside their own 30 um, is off the, you know, I don't, it's off the chart. Um, and, uh, you know, the, just the way that that unit played as a whole, it doesn't really... Uh, it's not going to find its way on the Bangor Daily News. It's not going to find its way on the uh, Channel 7 uh, Sports Blitz. Um, but it, it certainly was one of the big reasons why our defense was able to play with so much confidence and so much um, composure uh, because they knew that the, the other team, that our opponent had to go 70 yards or, or more to score. And so they, they didn't feel as though they had to make every single play. And, um, you know, those type of things don't, really get recognized um, uh, until you evaluate the season at, at the end and uh, they, they certainly stepped up they week in and week out and uh, those field position is huge and uh, they played well all year. You gotta get ready for the big payback. The big payback. That's where I live. Well the stage was set for a dramatic rematch with Bucksport in the semifinals of the playoffs. How did you prepare your team for this semifinal battle in light of Week Seven's loss? Um, you know, I think what we what we wanted to do was uh, send a message to them to Bucksport that we were better, physical, we were we were tougher, we were faster, and um, you know the way to do that was that that's when we really uh, went into the double double tight end power eye formation and, and really just you know, played smash mouth football. Um, really, really north-south with, with Boyer, Boyer and Stevens in the backfield with a seven-man front. And um, stop us if you can, that was the attitude. And um, we had to make sacrifices in that game. With, with that formation, you take rebar off the field. And uh, he was, uh, you know, never said anything as the consummate teammate and captain that he was. Um, you know, making a personal sacrifice of playing time on offense, and 
that was never an issue and uh, that formation turned into be a powerhouse for us and you know I, I think we sent the message loud and clear that night that um, you know we were the better team they got us once but they, they definitely weren't going to get us again. With everything on the line you guys held Bucksport to 66 total yards and controlled the ball for more than 30 minutes. What did it mean to avenge your loss in such an emphatic fashion? Going into the game, the semifinal game against Bucksport, I mean, we had a lot to prove. We wanted to show everybody that that game was a fluke, that we are better than the Bucksport um, team that beat us. And, um, you know, it really uh, it definitely helped us out for the rest of the season, all the way up to this championship. Ain't no way they can stop me now, daddy, cause I'm on my way. I can feel my ring coming. It's the blood of a champion. The LTC championship game was closer than the final score would indicate. John Bapp scored a touchdown with 31 seconds left in the first half to tie the game at seven. How were you guys able to respond with 26 unanswered points? You know, I think probably the biggest, if there was one single biggest play of the year, it was following that touchdown after they made it 7-7 um, with Donnie's 66-yard uh, touchdown uh, right the first play from, from scrimmage after that. And if you look at the tape, if you if you look back at the tape, every single man fulfilled their assignment on that play, you know. Uh, Louis blocking his guy seven or eight yards off the ball. You know, Alex Stevens is staying on the defensive end, who was first team all conference guy. Uh, uh, our wide receiver on the play had his man blocked. You know, Donnie really had those two safeties to beat because they dropped into a, into, into a two deep zone. And uh, he wasn't going to be denied the goal line as soon as he broke, broke the seam. And, uh, you know, that propelled us and gave us the energy that we needed going into the second half. Um, and then we returned to that double tight end power eye set to, to kind of take the, the wind out of uh, John Bapp's sails of, of any, of any um, you know, spark they might have had because we just used that physical demoralizing um, attack on them as well. So the game was closer than 33 to seven, um, but we really uh, took advantage of our, of our team uh, physical um, uh, physicalness in that in that second half. You ran for a career high 266 yards against a tough John Bapps defense in the Eastern Maine championship game. Did you try something new for breakfast that day? Um, yeah, actually for breakfast that day, I think I had um, a career high 12 energy drinks um, so that probably had something to do with it um, I'm not really too sure but I was definitely energized <laughs> A few days before the game, Dan Decker, who you know does the stats for the game and has been at every game the last few years and, and loves this team, wrote a letter to the team heading into the state championship. What did that mean to you guys? Reading that letter it reminded me a lot of freshman year when Ryan Stroud had also written a letter for the team to read on the bus ride down to Portland. But it meant quite a bit coming from a person who wasn't even on the football team, but had been watching us the past couple of years and just, he knew the hard work that we had put in. He was right beside us watching everything that we did on that field. And that really shows that how important this team was to the community. And I think that made a lot of people happy to, to know that there were kids paying attention to us and that really wanted us to win. Not just us that were dreaming about doing this, but people that wanted to go and see us succeed like that. It meant a lot to us and made us push even harder to go get that gold ball and make everyone proud. All right, you've followed this team really closely the last few years. Um, tell us what it's meant for you 
to watch this team and you know and why you decided to write a letter to the team heading into the state championship game well I made the decision a couple of years ago junior year when I was asked if I want to do the stats and I thought well this team's really gonna grow and they're gonna become something great and I want to be there every minute and I want to see how they're doing so I decided I would just kind of go out there and I'd watch their progress like last year with junior year that ending in Bucksport, I knew that they were going to bounce back and grow well as a team and really learn to step up next year and do their best. And then coming into the summer, I watched some of my best friends like hit the weight rooms and try as hard as they can to get in the best shape they could. And I knew that they were devoting more time than most of us could ever understand into just getting better and getting that state championship game. And I thought that someone should really reward them and give the perspective that some of us do know what's going on and we actually appreciate what they're doing. So I wanted to kind of pour my feelings out into a letter and address it to them in general so every one of them could read it and understand how I felt. It gave me a chance to show that I really did care about what they were doing and I was in it to be there with them as they fought for that state title and I was hoping that I could just show them that we actually, we all care about what they're doing and we want them to win and we want to be proud of them. Um, fellas, I just wanted to take this time to, uh, again, thank you uh, for this unbelievable season uh, that you've taken us all on um, in this ride in the playoffs that, you know, you, you told me and you told the staff from from day one that you'd take us on um you know tomorrow afternoon or saturday afternoon um i know that you guys are going to give your best effort there's no question about that you've worked too long and too hard and for so many years to get to this point and you know this is the this is the pinnacle of your careers um i couldn't be prouder um you uh, prouder of you as players as young men um and I'm just extremely humbled uh, to say that you're my first group, especially you seniors, you're my first group that I've had since you were freshmen. Um, you know, I, I know that you're going to give your best and we're going to bring home that gold ball on Saturday. And, um, you know, if, if I can say anything to you at all, it's thank you. Um, you've been tremendous. And if, uh, you know, if my son were to ever grow up uh, like any one of you, I'd be extremely proud. So thank you very much, and uh, I love you guys, family. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to take a stand, take a stand. Everybody, everybody, come take my hand, come take my hand. Walk this road together. How much did you know about Winslow, and what kind of game did you expect going in? You know, I was able to watch them play actually one Saturday afternoon, um, and uh, noticed just real early um, actually being able to witness that game in person that they were very physical um, you can't really see that on film as much although you can you know you can see that they're physical but to actually be there and witness it is a whole different thing and, and uh, being able to express that to the kids when we started to prepare for Winslow um, I think gave us a little bit of an advantage um, and, and, and made it more real for the kids um, because I think uh, being able to explain that to them really opened their eyes a little bit more than just showing it to them on the TV screen. Um, you know, we, we knew that we were going to be challenged um, in the interior of our offensive line because they put a lot of pressure on you uh, with their defensive tackles and nose guard and their middle linebacker was very active. Um, so we knew that as soon as, as soon as we started to prepare for wins, though, we, we knew that we were going to have to play the most physical football game that we played of the year. You didn't play football your freshman year when the team lost to Dierigo in the state championship. What was it like walking out of the tunnel and leading the team through the banner as you prepared to play for a gold ball? It was definitely, it was definitely amazing and um, I've never been a part or played in front of a crowd like that but it helped me a lot uh, the previous season uh, playing in the state championship uh, baseball game. Any type of any game like that, you get into, you're gonna have nerves and your emotions are gonna be running high. But um, for me, that was a big part of it, and uh, 
a uh, big part of me staying composed and just uh, knowing it's going to be a, my last game. Our, se our seniors knowing that it's going to be our last game, just going out there and doing what we have been all year. Talk about your team's effort in the state championship game. Um, just a just an unbelievable effort, really. Um, we were able to uh, we we played square through the first first quarter of the game. Uh, it was physical from the get go. Uh, not a lot of big plays. Yards were were very tough to come by throughout the the entirety of the football game. Um, you know, in the second quarter, we were able to get on the board. And, um, and, and they followed it up with a score, and then we played field position for a while, and then we took advantage of a huge, of a huge turnover, turned that into a touchdown, uh, and then took advantage of another one of their miscues and went for two and got, and, and got that. So we were able to build that lead and, and get that energy level up going into halftime. And then coming out to the second half, we put our finest drive maybe of the season together um, in, in extending our lead to 22-7. Um, you know, and then and then they went on their run late in the third quarter. They took advantage of one of our uh, mistakes, which any state championship caliber team is going to do. Uh, they scored two plays after that uh, on a short, very short field. And then, um, you know, we played square for the majority and, and physical for the majority of the fourth quarter with, again, not a lot of, not a yard, not a lot of yards to come by. Um, and then they put together their, their defining moment with that drive that they had late, late in the fourth quarter with, and scoring with under uh, three minutes to play. Um, and so we were faced with um, uh, having to uh, get two first downs um, uh, in order for them to force them to use their timeouts um, before we could take a knee and, and, and salvage the victory. Um, and so we lined up in a double tight end power eye and we went off the left side. We ran the same play five consecutive times. And uh, it, w it went for, I believe, four yards, six, six, seven, and eight. And um, that pretty much sealed the deal. We took a knee. But before taking the knee, uh, there was a there was a time they, they called their timeout right their last timeout there, and uh, I went out to the huddle and uh, just to, to you know to it was like a scene out of a movie. Um, there wasn't every single face in that huddle had blood on it somewhere. Um, and they were just not to be denied. They looked at me in the face and they said, Coach, we're going to get this done and we're going to win this state championship on this play. It was second and four and if we got the first down, we've, we've forced them to use that last time out and, and that's exactly what they did. And They just left no doubt. Uh, if there was more time on the clock, they had gone and scored if they, if they had had to. Uh, but you know, that moment was something that I'll remember uh, for the rest of my life, uh, looking at those kids and, and and their will, and, and just seeing that they, that they weren't they weren't going to be denied that first down. Uh, Danny, you sprinted off the field right after the end of the game. Where'd you go? I know where, but tell everybody. My wife and son. I mean, they're they're behind me. You know, they're my rock, and that's where I had to go there. You know, um, and then right back with my family on the field. I've got two families, and I'm very blessed. You know the taste of uh, being in a championship game before. A little bit shy as a player, a little bit shy as a coach. What do you? What's your feeling uh, now after winning this one? Honestly, this is the, you know, the, this one of the, if the biggest moment I've ever had, athletically speaking, and 
uh, you know, is tremendous. Stuttering all over the place. And this uh, Donnie Boyer's performance today, he had to run as tough as he's had all year. Yep, and he was special. There's no doubt. There's no question. I mean, it, that, that type of effort was great. And uh, up front, they got it done. They, they paved the way, and that kid ran hard his nails like he's done all year long, and I'm so proud of him. Boxcroft Academy has great tradition with football. Danny White certainly is uh, up there as the, the, the head of this, uh, this group. And uh, congratulations to you, Danny. You've done a terrific job with this, guys. Thank you so much, Tim. Okay. Thank you. Danny White. Boy, Danny had a great career as a quarterback. And uh, if anybody deserved a, a, a state championship, that guy did. He was all over the field and uh, just a, a masterful player. And now he's proven to be a masterful coach, bringing a championship back to Foxcroft Academy. You've talked throughout about the importance of the team becoming a family. Were there any moments this season, on or off the field, that helped unite this team? I think, you know, uh, they committed that philosophy in double sessions, um, and that grew more and more. Uh, again, I'll speak to that Orono game. Um, that that win meant so much to this this group, uh, avenging the loss from last year, and not just the loss, but the way that we lost. Um, and the, the demoralizing uh, emotions that we felt following that game a year ago. Um, so that was a key moment in this team becoming a family. Um, you know, and, and that message just kept, you know, um, coming up every day at practice that we, you know, we needed to come together as a family uh, more and more. We held a team meeting um, uh, after, the Sunday after our Bucksport loss. Um, and just gave ourselves an opportunity to uh, clear the air before we got ready to prepare for the next week. I think that was a big thing for us to do. Um, you know, so there was a, a couple of moments um, that, that we took advantage of off the field that, um, you know, really brought us closer together as a, as a team and as a family. What does it mean to cap off your career with a state title? It's absolutely everything that I've ever wanted that all the guys beside me in the weight room or out running whether it be during the preseason or regular season it's all that we've ever wanted we've been dreaming about it for a long time some of us it was for freshman year but I know there have been other guys on the team that have been dreaming about something like this for a long time now since before high school and to do that together with this team, to come together the way we did, how hard we were working together, and just the family that we had. It was great to not let anything down and have no regrets coming off from that field as we were walking off with a gold ball and giving Coach that state championship that we wanted to give to him for all the hard work, for all the hard work that he had put in as well. It's just, it's, it's incredible. I mean, there's no better feeling. Um, I mean, every senior dreams, every person dreams that plays football, that their senior year they'll win the state championship. And this year we made it come true, and we, we knew this was our last chance. And we had the heart, you know, we had, we had the drive to go and get that. And just um, the cap off. The, our careers was um, with a gold ball. It's just something that not many people can say they've done. It means the world. It means so much, especially to the seniors. It's every senior's dream to go out with a gold ball, to say that yeah, you won your last game. Not very many people uh, can say that. And uh, a lot of that goes to the coaches for, uh, letting it, for, for preparing us this season and something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Everybody on the team has worked so hard for this. Uh, we come out and practice every day and we put our best effort on the table every single day for hours on end, watching film. We just spend so much time in the off season, during, during the season, just preparing for it. And uh, it really just kind of shows that hard work is, uh, it really pays off. Um, and that's kind of, it kind of was like, we worked so hard for one goal, and it really just felt great when we achieved that goal. And how exciting was it for you to, to be there in Portland and watch you know, those years of hard work culminating in a state championship for, like you said, some of your best friends? Oh, it was great. That was easily one of the best experiences of my high school career, to go out there and see all the hard work they've done just pay off in the best way they could possibly expect. It was better than, I think, 
I could ever have hoped for and even they could have hoped for. All right, talk about what these four captains have meant to your program and how much it means to send them off with a state title. Um, you know, I've only been the head coach for four years, uh, but they are the most impressive group of captains that, that I've had. And, um, you know, they, their efforts are second to none. Their commitment was second to none. Uh, their dedication to the weight room, uh, to getting themselves in shape, uh, to doing the right thing, uh, to being good student athletes, um, and just being great people. I mean, I don't know um, how else to say it. Their contributions um, are almost unmeasurable to me at this point. They, they, uh, they're special, special human beings. Do you have a final message for your coaches? Just thank you so much for everything that you've done because I, I know it's been us. We were running those damn back downs that you were yelling at us to push a little bit harder on and not leave anything out on the field, but it takes a dedicated group of people to keep on pushing us like that and know exactly what it is that we needed to do. We were put in the right positions all the time. Like in the state game, going for those extra two points, that was probably one of the gutsiest things that I have ever heard one of my coaches call for a play and it absolutely paid off. We were put in the right positions all the time. We played the defense that we knew, we played the offense that we knew how to play, and that got us to where we are. And thank you very much for all the work and struggles that you went through. Yes, I, I want to say I'm very grateful for the coaches that we have. Um, the staff, I mean, like the, they just, uh, they were, they put us in the position to, uh, to win, and they helped us out through the entire way. And, uh, they they taught us a lot of um, they taught us a lot of uh, valuable lessons and um, you know we we formed a bond with our coaches and it wasn't and it's just uh, it's something that I didn't want I don't want to lose but um, I mean every senior is going to graduate but I want to say thank you for the experience that I've had with them. I want to thank every single one of them. Um, we know that they put in so much time and work into this, and uh, they really, uh, from the start, from the get-go, gave us our expectations and set the rule, set, set it down that um, we were the team this year. And um, I want to thank Coach White for uh, introducing family to this team. That was a big part of it, um, us coming together and buying into, buying into it, knowing that. Um, this is the season, and it was it was just a great overall season. I've never been a part of something like this. Yeah, I just wanted to I just want to say uh, thank you guys. Um, it means so much to me, and I know it means so much to everybody on the team. How much hard work you guys put in, and uh, we're all just so lucky to have a group of coaches that um, care about it as much as we care about it, and want to want to work as hard as we want to work. So. Thank you. What final message do you have for all your seniors? Uh, this senior group was uh, certainly the reason, a uh, big reason why we won the state championship. And if there's, any, if there's anything that I can do for any of them, uh, they know how to get in touch with me. Just an, an amazing ride with an incredible finish. Um, they never had any doubt that they were going to win this thing. Um, they, they, they stayed positive when, when we, we were going through some adversity. And, um, you know, just a, just a really good bunch of kids uh, that are gonna be successful people if they, if they live life the way that they, if, and they commit to life the way that they've committed to this football program. They went bad, but we wanted more. This is what we've been waiting for. With tears in our eyes, we let our hearts roar. Unleash war when we walk out this door. We won't be delayed, we won't be denied. In the end, we won't be refused with clear eyes. A full heart, there's no way that we can lose.